and how do I survive when I can't thrive. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Genomics with Georgia. You guys might have missed me for a while. Well, I've been <sighs> having the worst year of my adult life. It's been pretty terrible this year and I haven't wanted to keep this up and that's okay. <laughs> but I'm feeling better now and I am really keen to get back on social media because it brings me joy and I've really missed doing it. So I really hope that you welcome me back with loving arms. I thought that I could go through the problem solving approach of a data scientist because that's exactly how I approached my life this year. I've said it time and time again, as a computational person, you really do approach things with a logical brain on and it's just really helped me this year. So I thought I could summarize for you guys the data scientist approach to solving data problems uh, and how I kind of did that this year in my life. So uh, welcome back and let's get into today's video. Oh and if you're new here my name is Georgia, I've been a bioinformatician, data scientist for the past four years now. I really enjoy what I do and I share it here on this channel. So step number one in approaching a problem as a data scientist is to define the problem. So what is it that you specifically have to solve? So my problem that I faced it this year, um, I really sadly lost my nan uh, last summer and she raised me. So it was a super, super huge, huge bereavement. Um, and I, I needed to figure out how to cope with that and function as an adult. There was also a bunch of other things that ended up happening, like my poor little cat Monty died. Um, I got priced out of my apartment by my landlord and bereavement just freaking sucks. It's really hard. So that was my problem. But yeah, data scientists define your problem. What's the problem? So step number two uh, is to gather the data. So you've got your problem. Now you need to get all the data to solve your problem. So in my case, uh, gathering data essentially was me sounding boarding off my friends saying, hey guys, uh, how do I how do I survive this? What do I need to do? Uh, and the data for me was you need to hold down your job so you can pay your bills uh, and not let your mental health go down the toilet. So essentially, you know, figuring out what was the MVP, the minimum viable product of my life and getting all the data to help support that. So yeah, data scientists gather all your data to then solve your problem. Step number three, um, this doesn't really apply to my personal life, but clean and pre-process that data. So one of the most, I mean, I say this all the time in my teaching job, but one of the most important, 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 important things to do in data science is to clean that data because garbage in equals garbage out. So once you've collected your data, you need to make sure that that data is clean and polished and you've removed missing data, you've filled in gaps where you can, and then you've pre-processed it so it's kind of scaled and ready for whatever kind of downstream analysis you need to do. So I guess in my case, that's probably filtering out all of the weird comments and just streamlining all of the appropriate thoughts and processes into my decision making. Step number four in four in uh, the data scientist pathway is to do EDA. Um, EDA stands for Exploratory Data Analysis and it's essentially where you've got all of that clean data and you go and explore through that clean data and you can see if there's any kind of initial trend if there's any huge outliers, just have a have an initial glance at the landscape. You know, what are we looking at here? And this is really important because it means that you can then streamline your downstream analysis and do those more kind of refined modeling, you know, whatever visualization approaches, but you need to explore the landscape of your lovely clean data first. And in my case, um, I guess when I was exploring my all my data points that I was gathering, um, I kind of looked prehistorically at what helped me survive when things were difficult before. Uh, and obviously that's exercise, that's eating healthily and seeing friends, maybe speaking to a therapist about something, just having a look at what worked previously and then trying to implement. And how do I survive when I can't thrive? And um, on the point of surviving when you're not thriving, um, all the way through my time at university, when I was studying for my undergrad in genetics, 
before I got this lovely career that I love so much, I was so surviving and not thriving because I was working full time in hospo, I was like caring for my nan, trying to do this degree, like every hour was just about doing these requirements to then hopefully get some result years down the line. So I just want to maybe kind of like stop and take a break, take a pause at this point and just reiterate that just because you're not where you are right now doesn't mean that you won't be in the future and it's okay to be surviving and not thriving. It's really easy to look on you know, different platforms and see people doing really well, but you know, sometimes life isn't pretty and you just have to survive and do the absolute minimum that feels like giving your maximum effort uh, just to get you to the next stage. Um, so even if you haven't landed that job yet, even if you're really struggling trying to get through that degree, just know that surviving is commendable anyway. So, so just know that that's totally, totally okay and valid to be at that stage because I've been there before and I've been there this year. Step five of solving problems as a data scientist, once you've done all the exploratory, exploratory data analysis, you then want to optimize, optimize and solve. So if you've got a certain package you're running, you can play with those parameters, see if you get a different outcome. Um, and in my case, that might be, I took up running. Running has literally changed my life this year. I mean, it really just like elevated my mood. But in terms of like me getting into my running, you know, I was like trying out different routes, different locations, like different times of day. Like how could I make this work in my routine? And for me it's lunch running. Like I go and take a little run on my lunch break and it's literally just changed my life. Optimize, 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 change all those parameters, get the best setting that you can to get the best results that you can. Step number six in the data science solving pathway is to validate your data. So whatever results you've got, you know, they're only in this little bubble that you've been working in. How do they compare to publicly released data sets? How do they compare to maybe other groups in your research institute? You know, you need to check how you're doing compared to the expected. There might be a gold standard, there might not, but there probably is something that you can try to validate against. And in terms of me validating, uh, I guess just checking in with my friends. <laughs> I don't know, this one doesn't work, but yeah, validate your data against, against publicly available data sets. And then step number seven as a data scientist solving problems is to communicate your results. So once you've done all of your lovely steps and you've got your data, you've got to communicate them to people. So one of the best qualities about a good data scientist is their ability to talk to expert and non-expert audiences because what use is amazing data science if no one can understand what the hell you've done? Being able to have your plots looking really neat and beautiful, easily interpretable, being able to say something in layman terms that someone without your training can understand. And hey, here I am communicating the results um, to you guys on the internet. I'm pleased to say that I'm feeling happier and ready to come back filming videos. So that's really good. I have more space in my life now for other things apart from the best minimum VP. The MVP. <laughs> and then uh, point number eight, uh, the final part of being a data scientist when you're solving a problem is to iterate and improve. So yeah, you might have made your model and you've got the best parameters ever and you're really, really happy with your results and you've told everyone and everyone understands, but there's always room to improve. So iterations, getting more data, getting different data from different sources, um, just iterating and improving your data is what we like to do best. So I'm not quitting my running. Um, I'm going to keep running and I'm going to keep doing other things that make me happy and I'm just going to keep iterating over the solutions I found this year that have made it a possibility to survive uh, but not thrive and that's totally reasonable. So I hope this video has been a nice uh, welcome back. I'm still here, I'm still alive, I'm still a bioinformatician um, and this is also how a data scientist solves a problem. Stay tuned and I look forward to making loads more videos again about working in bioinformatics. Bye!